Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about whether or not Jesus is God or divine, and whether or not Jesus ever claimed to be God or divine, and then whether or not there's a difference between being God and being divine. And then most importantly, I'm going to share with you how whatever the divine status of Jesus is, how that status is equally true for everyone, every single human being. So to begin, I want to start off in the Gospel of John. Now in John 10.30, Jesus says this. He says, I and the Father are one. And right after he says that, some Jewish leaders hear him and they accuse him of blasphemy. Now, the response of Jesus is this. He says, hey, wait a second. Why are you accusing me of blasphemy for claiming to be equal with God when it literally says in your own scriptures, and he quotes Psalm 82, 6, that you are gods, you are sons of the Most High. And he says, so why are you accusing me of blasphemy for claiming to be a son of God? Now, in most translations, especially the English translations of that verse, in John, it doesn't say a son of God, it says the son of God. But in the original Greek of that text, the, the the is not there, it's a son of God. So what Jesus said was, why are you accusing me of blasphemy for claiming to be a son of God? So what does it mean to be a son of God? Jesus is not saying that he is the son of God. And by the way, we find that throughout the Gospel of John and really throughout the New Testament. When we see son of God in reference to Jesus, it's a son of God. Why? Because whatever son of God means, it's not exclusive to Jesus like many of us have been taught. Um, and then secondly, the son of God just it doesn't mean a literal birth son of God. It, it's, it means something different than that. Son of, son of God just means of the nature of, so of the divine nature. So to say someone is a son of God is simply to say that they are divine or that they are a divine being or that they have realized oneness with God. And so that's what Jesus is saying there. He's not claiming to be the one and only Son of God, although we find that in other parts of the New Testament. But even with that, you know, in the Greek, the, the, true, main, the true meaning of that is simply unique Son of God. But the thing is, okay, Jesus, was he a unique Son of God? Yes, but we are all unique sons and daughters of God. Each one of us is a very unique expression or manifestation of the divine. So when Jesus says that, the immediate response is, again, like, okay, blasphemy was, it wasn't just to say you are God, it's to be equal with God or to have some kind of special relationship with God, and that's what Jesus was claiming. Now, the verse that I, the first verse I said, John 10, 30, where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Many people have taken that to mean that Jesus is God. And this is where I want to talk a little bit about the difference between being God and being divine, because the way I understand it is a little bit different. In fact, it's a lot different. It's not a little bit different. Uh, so I think for many people, I know for myself growing up, God for me was a a being, a distant deity who is separate from us, who was the almighty, all powerful, the creator. And so when I used to hear and when I was taught that Jesus is God or Jesus claimed to be God, that's what I equated the word God with and, and with these claims, these apparent claims by Jesus, that Jesus was literally the mega being in the sky, in the heavens, the creator, the almighty God. Again, a distant deity. But 
and, and, and again, and, and that was the that was the uh, majority understanding in the first century by most Jews. Most of the Orthodox Jews, that's how they viewed God, as something separate and distant from themselves. Um, but to be divine and the mystical approach to God or the, or the divine is something much different than that. It's more of, first of all, it's ineffable, meaning God is beyond words, beyond the conceptualization of the mind. God is not a finite deity or a finite being. God is infinite and omnipresent and within everyone and everything and is one with everyone and everything. And God is pure consciousness and pure being and pure awareness. And it's something that we all together collectively share in. And that is, for me, that's what it means to say I'm divine or my true nature is divine. It's not saying that I am God alone or I am this this deity, I am one with this mega being that's up there somewhere. No, it's saying that who I really am fundamentally is beyond the body, it's beyond the mind, and I am one. There is something that is connecting the essence of me with everyone and everything, and that is source consciousness. And so the other thing is, I don't believe that consciousness is something that arose from matter from the material world. I think that matter and everything that we're experiences, these so everything everything that we're experiencing, these solid objects and again matter and the forces of the universe are arising from consciousness. I believe that consciousness is fundamental and consciousness is one and consciousness, pure consciousness can be synonymous with the divine. I believe it's who we really are at the core. And so when I hear or when I read about Jesus talking about this oneness with the Father, which by the way, I think I think Father just means source consciousness. I, I don't think Jesus was referring to a literal man who was a deity somewhere up there. Um, I think Jesus had fully... Uh, realized his oneness with God in the sense of his oneness with this source consciousness. And he realized that who he was was beyond the man, Jesus of Nazareth. And that's where I think we can, um, I think that's what the Christ really means. The Christ, the anointed one, is to realize and awaken to the oneness of everything, which is consciousness. That's what is uh, connecting all things. And even, you know, if, uh, if you talk to the quantum physicists, they will say that there is a field of energy that is connecting all of what we think are separate objects and matter. There's an underlying oneness. The unified field is, is what's... Um, the, the ultimate reality, and that's what's holding everything together as one. And I think that the unified field is consciousness itself. So anyways, that's the oneness that I think Jesus is referring to here in John 10, 30. I don't think Jesus is saying that he is one with the Father, meaning he alone is God or he alone is this deity. And the other reason is because in that same uh, gospel, the gospel of John in chapter 17, Jesus is praying. And in John 17, multiple times, Jesus prays to the Father, to source consciousness, that the same oneness that he has with the Father would be experienced by his disciples and by the world, by everyone. And he says this again, not once, not twice, but multiple times. We find this in John 17, 11, John 17, 21, 22, 23, over and over and over again, where he's saying, he's praying that the world, that we would all experience oneness, oneness with each other and oneness with source, oneness with God. And he keeps saying in that chapter that he prays that, that we would experience the same oneness that he has with the Father. 
And this is just a few chapters after John chapter 10, where he Jesus makes that initial claim of being one with the Father. So whatever oneness he has with the Father, he is praying for all of us, for the world, for every everyone to experience. And so if you take that and you say, oh, the, the, the oneness that Jesus was talking about in John 1030 is some kind of oneness with a deity, oneness with a being, or he's saying he is that deity, he is that being, then it just doesn't really make sense when you take that to John 17 and you read that into the text where Jesus is saying that we he's praying for all of us to awaken to experience that same oneness that he has with the Father. And then in John 14, 20, Jesus says that in that day you will realize that I am, in my, I am in my Father, I am in you, and you are in me. And so he says realize there, and that's important because I think that for some people, when they read some of this stuff, or even when they start to uh, understand oneness and the, the truth about divinity, they can think that it's something that they have to attain or achieve or earn. When in reality, it's not. It's something that we wake up to. It's something that we realize, as Jesus said. In that day, you will realize, you will know that this has always been true, that oneness is ultimate reality. And so it's a realization. It's waking up to the true self. Now, the other thing is there are times where Jesus says, and and this is also in the Gospel of John, where Jesus talks about how everything that he is saying and doing is not him doing it. It's actually the Father in him. It's the divine in him. It's source consciousness in him. And he had realized that that is who he really is. He is not the body. He is not the mind. He's not the ego. He had transcended his identity as a separate self, as Jesus the man. And he was totally embodying, expressing, and living from his true self. Not his false self, but his true self, which is oneness with the Father, oneness with Source. And so everything he is saying, apparently, in this gospel when he's talking, when he's teaching, is coming from this this state of consciousness of pure oneness, of I am-ness. And he even tells his followers, his disciples, he says, hey, if any of you wants to follow me, if if you really want to understand what I'm saying, you must first deny yourself. What self is he talking about? He's talking about the false self. He's talking about the ego. He's talking about who they think they are. You must let go of that. You must deny that and transcend it and recognize that you are much more than that. And that's really what divinity is all about. Divinity is not about, again, it has has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with separation consciousness. It has nothing to do with being a deity or some kind of mega being, some kind of mythological figure in the sky. No, being divine is waking up to our to the true nature of pure consciousness that fundamentally the truest essence of who you are is beyond the body beyond the mind beyond the ego beyond space and beyond time it's pure awareness it's pure being pure consciousness and i've talked about this in other videos and i'll maybe i'll put some in the link uh, in the description below i'll put the link to those videos Um, where I talk more about the true self, what that really is. So I think that's what Jesus was calling his followers, his disciples, to wake up to. And we find this mainly in the Gospel of John, as far as the canonical Gospels go. But this is all over the Gospel of Thomas. In the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus is clearly saying that he is divine, but he doesn't end it with that. He doesn't stop there. He takes it a step further. He goes beyond that. And he says that it's not just me that is divine. I am not just the son of God. You, and he's talking to his audience, his disciples, everyone that's around him, you also are divine. You are also sons and daughters of God. And it's time to wake up to that. 
That is the core message of the Gospel of Thomas. It's not that Jesus is divine and only God and the only Son of God. No, it's, yeah, Jesus is divine, but so is everyone else. And when we awaken to that, that is when the kingdom of heaven that's within us starts to really manifest all around us. And this is something that Jesus says in the very beginning of Gospel of Thomas. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, it's a reality within the depths of your being, but it's also all around you. It's it's outside of you, but you'll never be able to see it all around you and, and outside of you until you first awaken to it within you. And so as we go within and we realize that we are the temple of God and that the divine nature can be found within our being, then we awaken to our true self. We realize that we are so much more than the body, than the mind, than the ego and space and time. And we start to live from that realm, from heaven, which is pure unity consciousness. We move past the veil of Maya, the illusion of separateness that we experience through our five senses in this 3D material world, and we awaken to the underlying unity, oneness of all things. And that has a tremendous impact on how we live our lives. And that's really what being human is all about. Being human is all about awakening to divinity and realizing that through our, through our human body, we can access that divinity. And being divine, being divine again, is not about being this like spiritual mega being, this spiritual ego that's like a mythological deity. It's not what it is. Okay, it's something much different than that because it's something that we all share in. Just like all the waves of the ocean are the ocean or just like all the branches of the tree are the tree. We are all unique, and yes, Jesus was unique. He was a unique son of God, but he is not the only son of God. And we are, just like Jesus was unique, so are we. We are all unique expressions and manifestations of the divine. And I think that the good news, the gospel, is not just that Jesus is divine and that Jesus is the Son of God. No, it's beyond that. It's we are all divine. We are all sons and daughters of God. And I think religion, especially Western religion, has turned Jesus into something that he never said he was. And Jesus has been pedestalized and he's been turned into a deity for other reasons and for, again, uh, it's religion, it's dogma, um, and there's been different reasons and agendas that surround that, but we don't find that with Jesus. Jesus never put himself above other people. If anything, he he showed solidarity with everyone, and if anyone tried to like elevate him or worship him or pedestalize him or say even I think of I think it's the rich young ruler calls him good or something like that. And Jesus is like, why are you calling me good? I'm not good. Only the father source. So he's always like reflecting any kind of elevation, praise, worship away from himself. Why? Because I think he, I think what he really wanted us to know was that yes, he is divine and he can do all these miracles and all these great things. But it's not just for him. It's for all of us. That's why he says in John 14, 12, that we can do the same things he is doing and greater. Why? Because, again, as I mentioned, it's the Father in him. It's the divine nature in him that is doing everything and saying everything that he is saying. Jesus says this. And so if it's the Father in him who's able to do all these things through him, and we have that same Father, we have that same divine nature in us, then that is how we can do the same things Jesus did and even greater because we are equal. There's that same divine nature, that same divinity that Jesus had is within us. That same power that Jesus had is within us. And if we can transcend, let go of who we think we are, the false self, and start to live from the true self, our true divine nature, then we can access that power 
and live from that place of really it's it's the place of of perfect love of unconditional love and this is the other thing about divinity as we awaken to our true divine nature we start to transcend all these perceived limitations and i've heard greg braden talk about this a lot it's really fascinating divinity is all about transcending perceived human limitations it's realizing that we are beyond just human although we are human and we are experiencing life through this incarnation as a human being and when we transcend and include that that's ken wilbur that's a phrase that ken wilbur always uh says we transcend and include it then we realize that through this vehicle of the human body we can really access and express and embody divinity in a very uh, unique and extraordinary way and so one of the things that we, one of the main things we transcend when we awaken to our divinity is fear, along with many other negative emotions and limitations and belief structures. One of the main things that we transcend is fear. Now, why is that important? Because if we, if we transcend fear and we're free from fear, then we're not, it, it becomes hard to control us and you know, why do you think there's so much fear in the world and fear being put out? And and even with like fundamentalist religion, there's all these fear doctrines and dogmas. Why? Because if we are in fear, then we can be easily controlled. But if we transcend fear, then we are free to be our true authentic selves. And that's really the key. Authenticity is very powerful. When we can be our true authentic selves, then then the divine in us can really express itself the way it's supposed to. And with that comes intuition and creativity and imagination and all these talents and, and gifts and abilities and unity consciousness, oneness, love, kindness, peace, joy, mercy, forgiveness, all these things start to flow naturally. We don't have to try to attain all these different things. They just flow very naturally and authentically through us. Why? Because we're getting out the way of identifying as this false egoic self that's ruled by fear and shame, and we are transcending that and we are stepping into our true divine nature, which is free. It's liberated it's uh it's full of life and that's why jesus also says i've come to give you life and life more abundantly what does he mean by that well he's talking to his audience right that was in person in the first century and i think the i think the whole point of him saying that is i think he's trying to he's trying to show his audience he's embodying and expressing his divine nature at a very, very high level. He had completely transcended the ego and he was living purely from divine consciousness, from oneness consciousness, not from the false self, from the true self. And so when he says, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly, I think he means by example. As the people that he was talking to would witness and see and experience the divine in him, then they would recognize and they would realize that that divinity is not just for him. It's for, it's for everyone. It's for all people. And that anyone who goes within and accesses that power of divinity within themselves can also experience that true abundant life. And I think that abundant life is simply, like I was saying, just authenticity, being who you really are, allowing your true self, your true divine nature to flow through you. And I think that's what, in my opinion, I mean, I think that's what abundant life, life and life more abundantly, is all about. And so, is Jesus divine? Yes, but so are you. And I think that is the gospel message. Message That's the good news. That's the ultimate reality. It, the, it's not just, oh, it's for Jesus and just Jesus is divine and just Jesus is the one and only, one and only Son of God. No, the gospel message, the, the good news, 
that Jesus came to teach and embody and express is that we are all divine. We are all unique expressions of the one. We are all manifestations of the divine. And it's time to repent, metanoia, which means change your mind. It's time to change your mind, let go of who you think you are, and discover and live from who you really are, your divine self. That is the good news. So I think that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, informative, or insightful, please leave a thumbs up at the bottom of the screen and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Again, thank you so much. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.